It's just a noisy hall where there's a nightly brawl and all that jazz. This is a brilliant piece of theater. It's, it's to comment on our society by showing it within an evening of vaudeville. <laughs> That's pretty eloquent. You know, the defense attorney has his client as a, is a, he's a ventriloquist and he's got his dummy and that's a press conference. And that's, there's, that's the ventriloquist act in the show. And that's, a, that's a, a comment on our society right now that's, you know, Bob Fosse and Fred Ebb and John Kander wrote that in 1975 right after Watergate. Maybe the country wasn't ready for it at the time. Bob Fosse was always ahead of his time. Genius frequently is. The original cast, ensemble, and, um, and uh, principals included, was very, very unique. This was a group that contained um, ex-lovers, ex-husbands, um, uh, uh, friends, very, very best friends. All of these people as individuals were fantastic. You put them all together in that combination of people on that stage and then doing this material and it tore the roof off the theater. The music is the same, the words are the same, the choreography is almost the same. It's not the same, but it's, it's close. Um, and I have almost entire, you know, 99% of the people are different. Um, and I'm a different person than I was, and I'm playing a different part. I'm seeing it from the other side of the stage. It's, it's very uh, surreal in a way. I think I'm probably actually as a person a little bit more like Roxy than like Velma, as, you know, deep inside of me. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, I, I think we shouldn't limit ourselves, nor should the audience limit a performer and say that's all they can play and that's all they can ever play. I certainly appreciate it when people say, oh, I loved your Velma, and, you know, I, I always remember that. That's fantastic. I love my Velma, too. <laughs> She's very, very dear to me. Well, so here we have last night's Razzles. <laughs> Yeah, one of my favorite times actually in the theater um, is the uh, is after everybody's left, and there's just the ghost light on stage, and there, here's the leftover. You know, it's like the parade is gone. I, I get choked up thinking about it, but I do love that. So here's our our jury box, um, which is the uh, set for the musicians. You notice that's a black bass. <laughs> all the musicians, all the uh, instruments have to be black. We couldn't have a big, huge, mahogany-colored uh, bass. And the pianos are black, of course. And um, there's all kinds of little tiny exits and entrances back here. It's a little bit of a labyrinth. Uh, I can show you backstage if you want to see. This is the, the uh, you know, the calendar. And it's got all the originals. There's Jimmy Naughton and Joel and Annie and me. What's missing? My cigarette's missing. They must have, they, I think they made it politically correct. So you'll see we had stuck a cigarette onto it, so it was correct, because my Velma smoked. Here's, a, here's an entrance that's blocked right now, that's for the, so that the drummer can get to his place. But after, when the show goes up, that's one of the um, entrances. And back here, another entrance, that's the Velma Vader. That's the elevator that Velma comes up on. See, it's this right here. That's it. And then at the end of the show, Brenda Braxton and I take the elevator down and we just wait there until everybody leaves and then we can leave. This is our backstage areas actually on the stage. Let's go to Hell Kitty's gloves and her chokers, her jewels. These are my pins, <laughs> my lipstick and my Ricola. There's the stage manager's office here, and you see there's some hats are kept there, some of the bowlers. It's a very, very small backstage area um, in this theater. So they really, they, they do, they use everything. 
Here's where the fans live. Oh yeah, this is uh, a list of the longest running shows in Broadway history. I think that A Chorus Line is the longest running show in Broadway history, not Les Miserables, Cats, or Phantom, because those are West End shows. But the longest running Broadway show, it's A Chorus Line. This says that you guys are coming to the theater to shoot today. We have to notify, as per our equity rules, we have to notify everybody. This is the wardrobe room here. There's a rack of black clothes. <laughs> 24 years ago, I did dance in here in 1983, and almost the entire basement was the quick change area. And it was, it was just sort of curtained off into two big areas with a lot of costumes. <laughs> and the women are, were on one side, the men were on the other, and you go up and change and dance and come down and change, or sometimes change in the wing. Um, which I did for most of the second act. I, I started the second act with about three layers of costume. <laughs> yeah, God, it was fun. You know, smells are very um, evocative, and sometimes I come in and I smell the stage door area, and I remember being 23 in a Fosse show and being in heaven. <laughs> this is so funny. They have... Because <laughs> there's, there's always, they're always changing Velmas and Roxy's. So they just said, you know what, let's just put the character's name on the back. <laughs> it used to say BB and Annie. And now it just says, you know what, Velma and Roxy. <laughs> Justin Brosnan takes care of all of the wigs in the show. This is where all the wigs live um, for the show. Um, this is, well, this is a deconstructed Roxy. This is what BB actually wears in the show. Princess. And she makes me call her princess, <laughs> and I have to bow out of the room as I leave on a nightly basis. Something I've grown accustomed to. Um, but yeah, this is the way it starts, and at the end it looks fantastic, and BB looks awesome, and of course does a beautiful job uh, of wearing it. And um, it takes about, I don't know, about an hour to really? this every day. Yeah. Oh, okay. it's you don't have to work, every walk day. backwards then. Okay. <laughs> if you're working that so hard. The hook. And then there's about five or six other pieces and various weeks that go on in the show and uh, they just get all stored over there and as different people come in we create different looks um, in conjunction with David Brian Brown, the hair designer of the show and uh, it's just awfully good fun, eight shows a week, isn't it? <laughs> it yeah. really is. Well thank you for letting me show you this uh, beautiful theater and this beautiful place where we get to do our beautiful show. Thanks. <laughs>